How's he coming out? Of I have not talked to Flea yet today, so I don't have an update for you. Sorry to say. Was I right? First question. Well, maybe. I thought he did a really good job. I thought uh, I was super impressed. I thought there was one time it just show, shows you um, where it, it looked like he was going to get beat and just his ability to recover. And um, yeah, I thought he did a great job. Now, what was the so how did the decision process work? Because David said yesterday that it was your call. I'm assuming you talked to your experts on the medical staff as well. but. I mean, he, even if he didn't like it, he had to acknowledge that it worked. So how did that, prop, can you kind of take us through the week and the process there? Yeah, because initially, um, like I said yesterday, we weren't going to go zero, zero to 60 with him. So we were either going to do some sort of a pitch count with him in terms of either potentially pulling him at halftime or um, or just started thinking about, again, back to my previous experience with doing this in Houston. And then I, you know, I, I talked to Steno and some of our coaches about it. I talked to Goody about it. Talked to Flea about it. Talked to Giz about it. And then ultimately talked to our players about it, to David and to Yash. And um, so we just felt like that was the best. Talked to Aaron about it. You know, just wanted to get his, his feelings about, about that. Because ultimately I want to make sure he's comfortable with you know what we're doing there um but that's kind of talked to a lot of guys about it i guess and now uh, collectively made that decision and when the players are not on board with it you tell them we're doing it anyway or how does that part I, I told you i always listen to our guys but ultimately we we do have to make decisions and we have to make decisions in the best interest of our team and and just you know um try to give them the reasoning behind it, and I think I, th I thought it was valid just in terms of here's a guy that hasn't played a whole lot, um, you know, hasn't had a ton of team, and just the weather definitely played a part in that decision because it was, I mean, you, you can't replicate that, and it was, it was definitely humid, I think. Uh, shoot, you saw the effects of what it had on, on a guy like Lazard, who's in, in pretty good shape. Um, so that that's that definitely played a part of it to expect a guy to go out there and especially I think early on I mean I want to say would we have a 12 play drive and a 10 then a 10 play drive um, when we could actually pick up a first down in that first half um, so just that all the, all of that kind of played a part in the decision and you know is it going to be something we do next week I, I don't know that I, I think we'll see where he's at and um, you know come up with a game plan for for this week you got a pretty big decision looming whether it's this week or in a couple weeks with with Yash and what to do with the right side how much of it is just determining where Elton is, is of most value to you and basing it off of that or how, how do you go you know about deciding how to, how to configure that right side. That's a great question, Ryan. <laughs> I don't, I, one that we don't really have a great answer for right now, uh, but we'll kind of just work through it and, you know, but it's best, it's definitely been discussed in terms of how do we get our best five out there. Elton's an above average starter, no matter where you put him, even probably at the center, right? So is there more value of, with him at tackle than at guard just because of the position and what you can do to cover up a guard, or is it just he's there and he's an above average step? I, I think you always got to look at just uh, the collective of those five in terms of how they best complement one another and, and get the best group out there. Um, but, yeah, Elton's a guy, he can play anywhere. So that does give you a lot of versatility in terms of when you have guys that can play multiple positions. And um, certainly we always try to cross train those guys at different, at different spots. Um, it just gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of who you want to put out there. Hey Matt, you kind of mentioned it, but what were the biggest factors in the levels of execution from those first couple of series to what happened in the second half? Um, another great question. I think that, First of all, in the second half, there was definitely some penalties that brought us backwards. And, um, you know, <laughs> you look at every play and you grade every player on every play. And ultimately, we need all 11 guys 
playing as one, but it was like we were just a block off here or there and from springing some potentially big plays. But that, that's how it always is, and you got to give them credit too. I mean, that is one of the top defenses in the National Football League. Certainly, you, you can see their team speed out there and how aggressive they play. Um, they were disruptive up front. I thought, you know, they, they challenged us on the back end. And, um, you know, it just we, we were just a little bit off. It, it's like it's crazy how momentum plays such a part in it. And it's like, yeah, you sit there and you're like, all right, well, we can stop this. We can get it going again. And it just, for whatever reason, didn't materialize the rest of the game. And it, it, you want to talk about frustrating. Um, you know, you got, you're sitting there scratching your head, all right, what, what can we call to kind of jumpstart this thing? And I thought we had some opportunities there. Um, and then I thought there were a couple times we put our guys in some bad spots. And certainly we'll, we'll get that corrected from a, from a game plan standpoint and from a coaching standpoint. Because when, when you're not moving the ball, you, you're like, well, they're out coaching us because we can't get anything going. And that's a credit to, to their defensive staff and, and what they have on defense there. And, um, you know, fortunately for us, our defense and our special teams basically won the game for us. And, um, you know, like I told our guys, like I told you guys yesterday, we'll never apologize for winning, ever. I'd rather, you know, make the corrections after a, a win, and um, we'll do exactly that, and then we'll, we'll be on to New England. During that second half slump, you, 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 it was like a lot of third and fours and third and fives, so it wasn't like it was third and long, but the ball was continually being thrown short. Was that what the Buccaneers are doing or something a little too conservative, or what did you, what did you see there? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, it was just uh, – there were some times where he had – where Aaron had to deal the ball quickly because we got beat on a couple inside moves. We cut a three technique loose one time, and uh, you can't do that. And so, um, you know, it, it was all of the above. I think it was with your conversation with Larry after the game, but at some point yesterday afterwards you mentioned not getting to – a certain pack like man beaters or whatever in the second half probably quickly enough. Is that hard to do, turn the ship like that, as far as maybe you haven't repped it all week in practice, but you know you got to get to it? Well, you know, again, that's why you always want to go back and look at the tape, right? And you get put on on, on, um, or on the spot right after a game when emotions are still running high. And certainly there, there were some things that were there where we had guys winning and uh, just didn't get to them for whatever reason. And, you know, but yeah, we're always going to start with ourselves and look at ourselves critically first and foremost in terms of, like I always tell you guys, are we putting our players in the best position possible? And, you know, sometimes there, we were in a decent spot and then other times we weren't. And so it, it, it was a collective effort, I would say, from, from uh, coaching to execution. And so you, you have this good first half in which you're moving the ball and you go in at halftime and you know you're facing a guy who can run any kind of blitz and multiple stuff that he does. Do you, what's your philosophy then coming out in the second half? Do you just stick with what you were doing well and just assume you're going to still do it or do you assume they're going to counter something and you're going to have to come up with something? Else? Well, yeah, I think that um Basically, when, when you call a play, you want to have answers for all the possibilities. And certainly there's times when you're not going to have great answers. And I, I think that, you know, there was a lot of, like a lot of our runs, for example, yesterday had a lot of run alerts or run solutions on them because of all the pressure. Um, and we wanted to make sure if they were going to do that, that we'd have a, a spot to, you know, to spit the ball out. Um, that's why we were in the gun so much. But looking back on it, you know, maybe it felt like we ran the ball somewhat effectively when we got under center. So, like, those are the things that I guess you got to look at critically after a game and, and try to stay one step ahead of the competition. And so, you, so I'm not sitting up here trying to explain myself the day after a game. On the third down where Aaron hit uh, Tanya, with that blitz, have you seen? Have you ever seen a blitz like that? The fact that the A gap guys are there and then they dropped out and bought both corners. 
Um, are you talking about when we got the first down early in the game? Yeah. yeah, so they brought five from a side. So we've seen stuff like that. But typically, I would say most teams don't have the team speed where you can sit in there. And I think they dropped Keon O'Neill and both backers out uh, from the left side. Um, and, you know, Allen's basically running. He, he, he was on a corner route on that play, but he's basically uncovered. And they had a trap corner on, on the right side. We had, I think, Romeo on an out route. Um, and, yeah, no, it's – I mean, you can get burnt, but you can also make a huge play on that as well from a defensive standpoint. But I think that just shows you the confidence that they have in their guys and, and their ability to be in the right place at the right time and just the team speed they have because not everybody can do that. After, after the kind of some – bad plays against the run against Chicago. How did you feel the guys responded and what, what was the difference with uh, dealing with Fortnite yesterday? Well, I thought certainly we tackled a, a lot better. Uh, we didn't have as many, not nearly as many missed tackles. Um, definitely a different style of run scheme. But I, I, I thought our guys, for the most part, we played pretty physical. We knew it was going to be a physical game and um, kind of controlled the line of scrimmage from a defensive standpoint. Now, what do you when think? In, when Keyshawn came in, Brady didn't hesitate to go right at him. How do you feel he responded? I think he played an outstanding game. Um, you know, you, you look at it, I think what they had a 10 play drive to start the game and a 13 play drive to end the game, and everything else in between there, they, they didn't do much. Uh, there was a lot of three and outs. What did we have? I think four, at least defensively. Um, so, yeah, I thought he did an outstanding job. Obviously, created a huge turnover that, um, you know, you'd like to capitalize on when he, when he was able to punch a ball out. So, and then he still made his contributions, felt on special teams as well. So, he played more plays than anybody we had on our, on our roster yesterday. And I think anytime you get a guy that, you know, is in a backup role and they're called to step in and for him to, you know, play to that level. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect. I mean, there was – like, everybody's going to make mistakes in the game. But it was pretty damn good. So we're really pleased with his effort. Matt, with special teams, you know, the focus is always so much on returners, specialists. But how essential are the gunners in that equation? And what have you thought of just the production, you know, you've gotten in that area so far? Yeah, I think it's, it's – I mean, you, you probably could have answered this question yourself, right? I mean, you guys can feel those guys getting down there, uh, both Keyshawn and Rudy. Uh, they make a lot of they, – they can cover up a lot of whatever if you have some mistakes uh, in your coverage lanes, fan in the field, whatever. If guys are getting down there, they force a lot of fair catches. I think five out of our seven punts were down within the 15-yard line. And I think obviously Pat had an amazing day punting the football. But I think uh, just their ability to get down and, and win their one-on-ones or win a double team on the outside, I think, has made a huge difference in, in, in our punt unit. Is Wes able to there? answer that because he's a former gunner? Or... <laughs> um, you know, we don't use that term anymore. What do you call it? Flyer. Flyer? Uh, Wes can fly. He can. Um, yes, they can. We, we asked you a lot of questions about Romeo over the past you know, four months or whatever. Aaron's made his position known about his concerns about young players and the growing pains. Has Romeo just basically, I'm too talented for you to limit how much I can play? Is he at a point where you got to live with whatever mistakes he's going to make and you got to correct them, but he just he needs to play more because of what he's shown you? Yeah, he certainly has earned it. Um, and he's going to get that opportunity, certainly with – Having a guy like Sammy out, uh, is, it's just naturally going to happen for him where he's going to play more snaps. And I thought he, he made the most of them yesterday. I thought he did an outstanding job. He, he was um, a guy that showed up consistently being able to separate versus the man coverage uh, that, that we were getting. I thought he did an outstanding job. He just, he's got the body movement skills. He's got the explosiveness. He, he plays on his insteps, gets both feet in the ground, and that, that allows him to get off bump coverage and um, you know I, the game is certainly not too big for him I think you see it I, I feel that every time we go out there a, a guy that's just showing more more and more confidence and I think that's a big part of being able to play to your potential and this is a kid that's got a ton of potential and um, we're excited about him but obviously 
you mentioned it, young player, not even close to his ceiling. And he's just got to keep taking the same approach, which I know he will. He takes it one day at a time and he tries to be his best each and every day. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of learning along the way. And I think these next few weeks are, are going to be, you know, just critical to his growth. Um, just, you know, having the majority of the snaps, you know, playing our X, I think that, um, you know, not that we can't move him around. That's what's so. That's what's the beauty with him as well is he's not just an outside receiver. You can put him in the slot. He's got that versatility. You can put him at Z, X, F. It doesn't really matter because um, he he knows our concepts and he's uh, he's just he's he cares about the game um, and he he gives great effort each and every day. On the, on the two point play, what happened there? Um, Aaron mentioned on TV that he saw something on the on the jumbotron. Can you? Kind of detail any of that at all? That's a question for him. <laughs> how helpful was it? Whatever, whatever it was, how big of a deal it was? What was great question for Aaron. Matt, I know you say you didn't talk to Flea today. I don't know if that's just about Bakhtiari or, or anything. I haven't talked to him about anybody. So um, that was kind of by design. So when I can come in here, you know, I don't have to <laughs> so give you any know, information. So when I, so, it was so Waller's so suggestion. So when I asked you if you've avoided serious injury, can't tell you. Can't tell you. Well, one would think if there was a serious injury that you might have talked about it. So can we read between some lines here? You can do whatever you want, Bill. <laughs> Anything you want. Yeah, I did ask about tackling last week, about the misses. And um, I yeah. think I had Devondre missing one yesterday, and that ended up being the Quay fumble. So what did you see in that regard that, that really improved? Well, the guys took your message to heart. Sure. And you inspired them to go out there and, <laughs> sure you know, play with better fundamentals and fly around, and they did exactly that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. On a serious note, what, I can't even answer that. You, what, what did you see in that regard? That no, I, I, I thought our guys, they, they did an outstanding job. Um, certainly Tampa was, obviously, they, they were missing some key pieces that present some problems. But, uh, you know, we can only control what we we can control and our, our guys were flying around so like like you mentioned it you know you miss a tackle and a guy create, uh, causes a fumble so um i just thought our effort by and large especially with um again playing in those elements and in, in those conditions i thought our guys were flying around i thought our coaches for the most part did a really good job of, of trying to keep guys fresh and you know sub in a lot of players and um so I thought that was beneficial as well, just because you can give max effort all the time. And that's the expectation we have for our defense. And I think that's the signature of any great defense is that's where it starts. It starts with running to the football and, and just, you know, giving 100% all the time. I can't wait for Bill to call up the huddle on Wednesday like Larry did at the end of training camp as his reward. Sure. Um, Matt, you, when Sammy got here, he talked about how he felt like he had not done a good enough job of making sure he did the right things to prevent injuries. And I don't want to jump to a conclusion, so I need to ask you, what exactly, did he get hurt on Wednesday with that hamstring? Yeah, you know, like, and, and I feel awful about that because I feel like we probably um, pushed our guys a little too hard in that regard and just coming off um, a physical game, a night game, and then, just uh, again, he's done everything in his power to to be in great shape, and he he is in great shape. And it just you you look at the the volume and the workload, and always trying to look at yourself critically and, and thinking about what we could have done better. We've had a few too many soft tissue injuries, so that that probably tells you that we're maybe pushing it a little too too much. Um, and it's just, it's an unfortunate part of it and um, feel bad about it, but you know, there's nothing we can do about it, you know, you know retroactively. We just, we can only control moving forward what we, what we ask our guys to do. And I've got our guys kind of looking into our workloads from the past couple years to where we are at this point, And we'll make any adjustments that we need to, to make sure that we have everybody available for Sundays. Was Jim Watson the same situation? Did he get that hamstring in practice as well, or was that from the game? Yeah, that one, that one's a little bit more complicated, I would say, um, because I, I don't really know how that came about. 
to be honest with you, because it, it kind of happened even before we got out there. So, uh, but I think he's he's doing a lot better. So hopefully, we'll see where he's at this week. With everything you, you just said about reevaluating, you, 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 for a long time it's been padded practice on Thursday. Do you think that has anything to do with moving the, the padded practice to Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to necessarily say that, but I just again we're going to look at everything, especially just our volume of workload. And, and kind of see where we're at in, in comparison to years past. But, um, yeah, that, that, that's definitely crossed my mind. Any more, please? Since I single-handedly fixed the tackling issues, how about the defense to start the games where you've given up um, 17 points to start off in the, in the first drafts and you know, obviously play much better after that? You got any suggestions for I us? No. Okay. I thought about it all night, too. All right. I don't know. We, we definitely have to – we definitely have to – start better there's no doubt about it and certainly it if you give up explosive explosive plays uh, the odds of scoring are, are much greater and it happened the first play of the game and they got a big pass across you know over the middle and um you know it, it led to points so but i thought outside of that play for the most part for the rest of the game i thought our defense was solid until you know the, the two minute drive and we got a little bit softer and i think anytime you're playing a quarterback of that caliber He's he's able to kind of if if he know if he sees a a weakness anywhere he's going to exploit it and that's what Tom did and uh, that's why he's one of the greatest ever. Matt, what does Amari Rogers have to do to get on the field more? I mean, as a guy who really seemed to be coming into his own at the end of preseason, coming off a game where you guys were down a couple of receivers and he plays three snaps. One of those was victory formation. Yeah, yeah. no, I, it's just he's got to keep working and and uh, you know if, if the opportunity presents itself he's just got to make. Take advantage of, of those opportunities, and uh, right now they are limited. But um, you know, every day is we're constantly evaluating, and you know, it, it always starts with practice first, and then you get those opportunities in the game. And I go back real quick to the load management thing. I know you've got a lot of things on your plate during the week of the game plan and everything else. But is that one of the biggest challenges for you as a head coach? Is figuring out how to get the workload and the amount of work you need to be ready for the game. I mean, I don't know how many practices last year you said were from the neck up. So it's not like you generally push these guys super hard. Is that always a balancing act that you struggle with? Yeah, and I think, you know, again, some of this stuff just happens. It's football, right? It's, it happens in athletics. And whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever it may be, some of it just naturally happens. And you try to avoid it as, as best you can. And you're always trying to mitigate the risk, but still knowing that uh, you have to put in the work to get better and, and to get to where you want to go ultimately. But uh, um, again, it's, it's to me, it's just more about mitigating the risk. If, if we, if there is something that we can control, then we'll do that, and we're going to look at everything and try to make the best decision possible for our guys and for our team.